Hey everybody, happy holidays. I have just finished up doing almost all my outdoor decorating. I have a couple little things to finish up, um, but I'm pretty excited about what I've done this year. And I thought instead of showing you guys um, another situation where I'm making a container for you, um, and you can kind of check out how I did that and I walked through that process in my last video and I'll link that. But I thought maybe I'd show you some of the tips and tricks that go into actually assembling them because sometimes I think that's even harder to do. You know, can, your imagination can go wild on these things, but how you physically make it happen sometimes is a little harder to figure out. So I thought I'd walk you through um, some of the little things that I did in particular in this container and the window box this year. Okay, so this container is primarily um, curly willow, and then I also did fantail willow on here. Um, these are so interesting, and they're not that typical red twig situation, which I love, but I think it's nice to change it up sometimes. Because I wanted a lot of it, this container needs height. It's by their front door where it's up on these big steps, so I always need something kind of big and bold here. But obviously I wasn't gonna take it an enormous bundle of all these twigs. So what I did was, um, and I will tell you right now that I did not come up with this idea. Uh, Deborah Silver, she owns Detroit Garden Works and she's a designer there, she co-owns that. And she is extremely generous with sharing her information and how she does things on her blog, which is just wonderful that she shares that information. So I do get a lot of inspiration from Deborah, and I saw them do this. Um, so basically I took a tomato cage and I um, attached the branches to the outside of the tomato cage. And you can see the top ring of it here. It probably would have been better if I had a stainless steel tomato cage. All I had was, um, red and I didn't feel like I didn't think it was important enough to spray paint it or anything like that so I attached the branches um, all around the outside of this and uh, first I did the curly willow and then I did the um, fantail willow after that so here's the key right here you guys I call these wire ties you might call them cable ties but you know what these things are I bought the tiny little ones and every branch is wired to this um, form twice. So at the, there's two points, it's at the bottom, and then the second ring. I did not wire it at the top ring, because I didn't think that was necessary. And then I actually, in some cases, wired the branches onto each other when I added that fantail willow on there. So everything went around with these little guys. I went through, well, this is my second package of 100 of these this year. So this is where the lighting comes into play. So after I had the branches wired onto this cage, I also wired in a couple of, actually I just, they had little clips on them, a couple of, str or just a string of big lights on the inside that you'll never see. And then there's some that are just kind of laying in the bottom of that center. Cause I want there to be almost a tower of light coming out this. I want this thing to look like it's like on fire or something. Once I had it in the pot then, I did put on the little LED twinkle lights. These are great lights, tiny little lights. The only problem with them is that often, although the light strings themselves are weather resistant, the plugs aren't. So I will show you in a minute what we do about that. Then I went in and put in the branches and you've seen me do that before. I just cut apart another Christmas tree uh, from a big box store um, and I used that for both of these plus a couple other containers. So I put all the either Fraser or um, balsam on the bottom and then I used cedars from my trees and I sort of worked it all up in the middle here because I wanted to cover up that base a little bit. After that, that's when it got a little fiddly and I went a little over the top maybe but I wired on these pine cones. Each one of these pine cones is wired on with paddle wire um, individually, and then I just twist it on. They're not on there super tight. I don't, they don't need to withstand a hurricane. They're not gonna go anywhere. I will say, um, I, it's amazing how many materials you need for a container like this. So the back does not have pine cones on it, which is fine. You're never gonna see it from the back. You're only gonna see it from the front and a little bit from the sides. So I only went about, not even three, maybe like, I don't know, two thirds of the way around this thing. So the back is bare, but I put these pine cones on. Now these pine cones, I did bleach these. Uh, and there is an Instagram story up about how I did that. Uh, there's nothing tricky to it. And I'll put a link to the directions for the website that I always use their directions to do it. But I like them to look a little lighter. Some of them, you can see this one got a little bit more bleached than some of the other ones, but um, I still like the look of a lighter pine cone. I think sometimes regular pine cones are so dark that you kind of lose them a little. 
after all that's done, so now I've got the pine cones wired on, the whole thing in there, and then I just went in and I put a string of lights in there, and let me show you how all the lights get hooked up. Okay, so it's not pretty, but this is what's hiding in the back of this. This is um, a waterproof electrical box, and we tuck the extension cord into that, and then everything plugs into that back there. And as long as you, I mean, if I was really worried about this, it, it would not be hard to cover that up with some greenery, and you wouldn't see it. But that's how we do, how we deal with these little LED lights that don't have waterproof plugs. Here's the back of it, and you can see that I did not take it all around, and you can actually see the ring a little bit better back here um, because the branch has got a little sparse back here too. I think in all cases, these containers might have looked better if I had more materials, but you can only, I am only willing to spend so much on containers. Okay, so hopefully you can see how the whole thing came together. You know, really it's a, other than all the futzing that I did with the pine cones and everything, it's actually pretty simple. Um, and I like that. It's a very sort of natural look, and I do think it looks better with the lights on, but I think it doesn't look too shabby during the daytime either. So the, our window box is so high on our house because our foundation's really high that it's very hard for me to be in a shot with the window box standing on the ground. Uh, but just want to show you kind of the overall look of the window box. One of the things that um, you have to keep in mind when you're building a window box is what angles you're gonna see it from. So for me, obviously you're gonna see it from up underneath mostly. And so that changes the picture a little bit. Everything I have in the top has to be kind of up higher. Otherwise, it's just gonna get lost behind all those evergreens. So let me go up the ladder and take a look at closely so we can take a look at how that all came together. The window box for several years now has always incorporated this steel ring. Um, it is, I love the way it looks and it's one of the few things that I haven't had any desire to change. We had this ring made for us by a local steel worker when we were having a fire pit ring made and I asked him if he could do a couple of extra rings. It was very inexpensive. It's basically one weld for him. So we did have him drill a hole in it. And if you see this orange stake back here, that is actually just a fiberglass driveway marker. But you have to have something so that it doesn't roll. I mean, in the wind, it would roll back and forth in the, in the window box. So you have to have something to kind of anchor it there. And then I tip it up against the wall so it's not wanting to roll out. The lights are another one of those strings of LED lights with the, with the not waterproof plugs. But these are really nice because they go off in both directions. You know, it's like double the lights. So, and I like it in black so that you can't see it. So I put this string on in the basement. I hang the hoop and then I just wrap this around. So the key is that you have to keep those lights on there somewhere. And they're kind of tight on there, but they're not, um, but they could slide off and that gets super frustrating. So this year, uh, I have used wire ties in the past. This year I just used black twine. I think I have four or five pieces up around the ring, just in a couple of places just to tie it on. And you can't see that at all. So on the steel ring, if you are not fortunate enough to just have a steel guy around that you can go to, although I was shocked at how easy it was to find someone who could throw these together for us. Um, some of the other things you could use for them are the outside of a wagon wheel. For whatever reason, we've got a lot of rotting wagon wheels hanging around our neighborhood. And there's a metal ring that goes around the outside that would be perfect for this. You could also use the metal stays that are on whiskey barrel planters. When those whiskey barrel planters rot out, those metal stays are still there and those are great. Um, other things you could use would be maybe a hula hoop spray painted black. You could use, I've seen people use grapevine wreaths uh, in a small, sometimes those might be a little bit smaller, but that could work really well. Someone even suggested bender board, and I think that could work too. Um, you might need a little bit of spray paint on some of these things to um, make them kind of disappear. I will say, I think the lights, I've tried wrapping the lights around the ring um, in and out, but I think they look better when they're all wrapped around the outside because I think that makes it look more defined. So you can do whatever you like, but I prefer the look of all the lights on one side of it rather than wrapped around because it definitely, you can still see that it looks like a ring uh, at night when it's lit up. After the ring was in there, that's when I started putting in the branches. And in this case, I used some more um, uh, red curly willow or curly, yeah, curly willow. And then I used yellow dogwood and I am so into that yellow dogwood this year. I think I'd like to use more of that so bright and then I actually use some red twig dogwood so 
There's a lot of color there. I think, again, it would have been better if I had more branches. I actually saved a couple because I want to put some on a wreath. I didn't want to use them all up there. After that, it was just a matter of filling in all the greens. This is, again, a mix of just cedar and either Fraser fir or balsam uh, from a Christmas tree. And added in a few clumps of pine cones. Uh, on the pine cones, I wired, if you can see in here, you see this little stick right here? This is actually the bottom of a dogwood branch right there. It's the bottom of a dogwood branch and I wire them together and then wire them onto the dogwood branch and then jam that in there so that they'll stay where I put them. And then behind here, and this is again sort of the key, there is, let's see if I can get you in there. It's a little hard to see in there, but behind here is another string of old lights. There's a couple burned out on there that just lay behind the ring so that the whole thing, again, lights from within. And it's a very pretty look in particular from inside. And then I just came back and filled this in with my little weather resistant red berries that I've been kicking around for several years now. Okay, so if all of that is seeming a little fussy to you, I thought I'd show you something I threw together. This is once again a case of basically using what I have left over or what I have around uh, to just quick make a container. This is off by our back door. I don't have any intention of running light over to this. This is all it's going to be, but this is the door that we use the most. So it's nice to have something pretty right by that door. Uh, all I did was grab um, sort of a, a scraggly little tree um, from, uh, from our woods and cut that down and stuck that in there. And then I just used some leftover dogwood, a little bit of the rest of the fake berries that I had left, and then I filled in the whole bottom with pine cones. It couldn't be any more different from all the fuss with those other ones. This is as simple as it comes. and I think I like this equally as much as those. So I think it just goes to show that you don't have to spend hours. And I did spend hours on both of those putting together a big, something big and elaborate because this can be as simple and easy can be just as beautiful. And it's more about just a little bit of color, especially like for us, we've got this white house, which is, um, you know, sort of devoid of color in winter. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just throw some stuff in a pot uh, and it looks pretty good. So I wanted to tip for you and I'm just going to quick show you uh, how I like garland because it took me a while to figure out the good way to do that. Okay, so you know what a pain in the butt it is to put lights on garland because they keep getting twisted. So we have devised a method to help with that. So the key to this method is suspending it. So you can see that here we've got it tied up on one side just to the pergola. And then over here, we've got a line that actually goes to the tree. And you don't have to have it high. You just have to have it not laying on the ground so that it makes it a little easier to wrap it around. If you have your lights on a reel, that is a lot more helpful, but whatever. A ball works too. And then when I'm putting the lights around, I don't worry about too much about untucking things as I go. I go back later and I can pull out some of the pieces of, in this case, cedar and sort of fluff it then. If there's some obvious ones that want to hang out, that's fine. So I hope those tips were helpful for you. you know, I just want to show you a little bit of how you can actually put these containers together and some of the little kind of cheater things you can do to hold everything together and not make it as big of a deal as it could be. Now you can go simple, you can go over the top like I do sometimes, but whatever you do, it's gonna be beautiful. Uh, if you guys found this video helpful, I'd really love it if you gave it a thumbs up or if you decide to subscribe, that'd be great. Um, and now all that's left to do is show you what it all looks like with the lights on.